You, you can't describe Danny. It's more of like I get a feeling inside and a remembrance of this little kid. You know, like this big, 14 years old, Danny walks in and just looks at me and goes, dude, I want you to build me a ramp 100 feet tall and I want to be like the evil Knievel of skateboarding. Even back then, that's where Danny's head was. Way before Mega Ramp or anything. This is, think about the year, Danny was 14. Not too many people know that Danny Way story. I cannot believe what I just saw. Well, Danny's always full of surprises. And when I saw him like, uh, I don't know, eight months ago or something, he's like, hey, I'm gonna do this thing coming up. I'm like, what is it? He's like, well, I'm building this thing out in Hawaii and it's actually gonna happen. Here's what it's gonna do. I'm gonna make a gnarly step up gap. You know, I'm gonna make a gnarly quarter pipe. And, some gnarly combinations of things. And I was like, wow, you know, here he goes again. And why is Danny doing that? Because he's into progression. Simple as that, he wants to progress. That's what thrives him. He has that drive and he's had it since he was a little kid. You know, you watch some of the old videos and motorcycles and trampolines and they're just, they're, they're nuts. When I first met Colin, he was already trying technical stuff on Vert, you know, and then when Vert died, he pretty much took it to the streets. Colin and Danny Way, they would skate Vert, they would skate mini ramp, they would skate street. They were very progressive on all aspects of skateboarding, which is, is pretty insane. You, nowadays, you don't really see that. You're either a Vert skater or you're a street skater. We skated very similar at that time, and what we were doing, Vert skating or whatever, that was what we were interested in. And, street skating at the same time, you know, so I don't know, that was a big part of it, what made Danny and I so close. And then now it's just been, obviously, 25 years of history and it's a whole different thing. We set this up, you know, for round number two of Plan B to support Colin and I's ability to, to, to continue on with our skateboarding careers and not end up in a position where we have too much obligation dealing with the nuts and bolts of Plan B versus dealing with the bigger picture stuff. It's a juggle between the both constantly though. You know, there's a lot of responsibility that's being dealt with every day and some of those responsibilities can't move forward without Colin and I having a decision in that or an opinion or uh, orchestrating some of it. And right now, I would say skateboarding dominates the priority list. You know, Colin and I are skating well the team's gonna be inspired. We can't expect them to go out and film video parts if we're not doing it. That's just how we are. The video's not gonna happen without us doing our thing. I'm gonna make it. No, I'm going to make it. It's hard to sometimes draw the line between business and friendship and, you know, sometimes those stresses bleed over the lines and we have such a history that I think. I mean, Danny's like a brother to me, you know, and it's like after, like whatever, it's been 18 years of business together and stuff. I mean, there's been times when we're like this and we are not seeing eye to eye, and it's been, you know, a whole lot of tension and stress. But all of that stuff just makes the relationship stronger. We're probably as tight as we've ever been in our entire lives at this stage of the game. A million dollars. <laughs> 1.3. Lucky. The beauty of having a good friendship with somebody and having a business is that he stepped up, you know, for me so many times when I've had to dip out for whatever reason. When I've been hurt, that has allowed me to like be more involved with the company and that frees up Danny to go skateboard and I'm more than happy to do that because his skateboarding is the only benefits the bigger picture anyway for all of us, you know, and it would be the same if it was the other way around, and it has been. I think there was like a period we didn't skate together for like, I think it was like three years. Hanging out all the time, but like, yeah, I'm on crutches, he's got a shoulder like this. Literally for three years, I think we were like both, like, 
had several surgeries and then we'd both get hurt at the opposite time. The other person was just getting better. And anyways, we got him here today. It's a big step. And uh, I can't wait to see what he's gonna tackle here. The motivation behind this ramp is to keep progressing, I think, the ramp designs to allow new possibilities on the skateboard. It's, it's, an, it's a hybrid of everything I've ever experienced in skateboarding. It's going big, it's, you know, all of the years of ramp uh, design. It's got, you know, all the street-minded features in there. I, I would much rather have a ramp that can give me the platform to do these tricks. I would typically go to the vert ramp to film, but do them bigger, do them better, and even take it to, to the next level. Flipping the board without grabbing it, you know? You see me fall a bunch of times in a row? It's because I'm trying to do that. <laughs> he sets for himself, he's got a vision in his mind. Here's what I want to do, here's what I want to achieve. He understands his balance, he understands his center of mass, he understands how hard he's willing to push himself to achieve it. So what's next? I don't know, sky's the limit for Danny, it's what's he willing to think of. He's just always trying to outdo himself. I think he's always been in a competition with himself. You gotta get the right one. Yeah, he can't stop. Yeah. He can't stop himself. When you look at what he's done on Mega Ramp and kind of inventing that and then how far he pushed it and how he keeps pushing it and he'll break himself off and keep going. You're humbled by who he is as a skater. You have to be. You look at whatever Danny does and go, man, we can't be like that. Like, is there really a person out there like Danny? No, he's the, he's the one. I mean, as skateboarding in the industry goes, we love him. It couldn't be without him, you know? And still to this day, every day, every time I see him, it's, it's a very awesome sight, you know? What's up? It's Tori Pudwell. This place is going off. This is the U.S. Open 2012. We're doing it big right now. You know what's up? It's the real shit. 